Welcome fellow audio sorcerers, wizards, and gurus to my channel. I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the audio sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So in today's video, we're continuing along with my Pro Tools series. We're talking about how to record MIDI, and then how to quantize it, and then I'll give you a couple other tips on MIDI editing in general. So before we get to the video, I do want to remind you guys that I offer mixing and mastering services. So if you want to get your songs mixed or mastered by yours truly, you can go to audiosorcerer.com. You can check out my samples and my rates, and I give 10% off to new customers. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to have new videos coming out. So with that being said, let's get to this tutorial. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools, and today we are talking about how to record MIDI, and then also how to quantize it. And I suppose I'll also show you how to loop it up when we finish recording something. So when you think about recording MIDI, you're like, oh, I probably need to put a MIDI track in to record MIDI. And the answer to that is, in most situations, no. You're going to want to create an instrument track because an instrument track is a MIDI and aux track combined into one. So what it allows for you to do is to put your virtual instrument on it, and then you can actually hear it back. If you were to insert a MIDI track, you're not going to be able to put anything on it. No effects, no instruments, so it's pretty useless when it comes to you know trying to use it with a virtual instrument. A MIDI track would be more used if you want to use MIDI to trigger something. So that's not what we're going to be doing in this tutorial, but you can take the same techniques you learned from this tutorial and use it for that. So the first thing we need to do is create an instrument track. And again, as you know, we use shortcuts on this uh, channel here. So Control shift n on a PC or Command-Shift-N on a Mac will launch new tracks window here. And uh, we're going to do a stereo um, track here, instrument track. Let's see. And uh, I don't know, we'll call it piano. So we're going to use the default mini grand in here to do this example. All right, so now that our instrument track is created, and before we put an instrument on it, we need to make sure that your MIDI controller is working. So you're either going to have a USB MIDI controller, or if you're old school like me, you're going to have a keyboard that actually uses MIDI cables. So what we want to do is go to the setup tab up here. We want to go down to MIDI and we want to go down to input devices. And all you need to do is make sure that your MIDI controller is found in here and that it is checked. And then after that, just hit OK and you are all ready to go. So now that your MIDI controller is set up and we have an instrument track created, now we just need to insert an instrument on it. We will insert an instrument using the first insert here. And like I said, we're going to use uh, Mini Grand. It's actually a pretty good sounding piano. Um, if you modify it, you know, with some effects and EQ and compression, you can make it sound much better, of course. Um, this is what it looks like. So I'm just gonna, I guess, make something up on the spot here on piano, and uh, I'm gonna leave the default tempo of 120, and I'm just gonna play that, and then we'll see uh, see what we get. So let me record a naval track here. And then again, if you wanna record, all you have to do is hit numeric three on your keyboard and that will start the recording or you can obviously hit the record button and then play if you want to do it the manual way so here we go All right, cool. So that was just a simple little piano part, which I think will be good for showing you guys how to quantize MIDI. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna close the mini grand here, and then we're gonna zoom in. So if you do T on your keyboard, that's gonna zoom in here. Now, there are two different ways to go about editing MIDI. You can either edit it within the edit window here by going over to the down arrow and then you can get to the notes here. We can actually see them and move them around, lengthen, shorten them, you know, do whatever you want to. And you also have other uh, controller stuff in here like uh, velocity, which is uh, here. And then some other controller stuff in here, which you could actually control your um, sustain pedal using that there, which I am using. That's why it's lit up in yellow. But this is not my preferred way to edit MIDI because we'd have to, you know, obviously blow up the window here. And if you have a bunch of tracks within here, it's kind of a pain. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to clips. We're gonna double click on this. 
and that launches our piano roll here. So now the way to go about quantizing is you can quantize this all at one time, but if your performance is not great in timing, the notes are gonna shift in the wrong direction. So my performance is actually pretty good and we probably could quantize the whole thing, but uh, let me show you how to do it in sections. So we'll do these two measures first here. This is uh, three up to five, so we'll highlight these. And then if we do Alt Numeric 3 on your keyboard, that will launch the edit window. I believe it is Option Numeric 3 on a Mac. So this is your event operations window, and you're gonna see that Quantize is selected here. There's a couple other options in here, but again, we are strictly working with Quantize. So I recommend leaving obviously Note on, not obviously because you guys are just learning today, but yes, you want Note on to be on. And then note off, uh, don't worry about this. And then preserve note duration. We want this because this is gonna keep our performance in place. So what, what that means is that we're gonna want, like I played, I started this note here and it ended right there. We don't want the ending of the note to quantize to you know a bar because then it's gonna you know sound somewhat artificial and it may not also end up where we want it. So note on and preserve note duration or which you're gonna wanna have checked. Now, in this scenario here, being piano, we tend to play more notes in it than maybe just like a, a lead part per se. So maybe working on an eighth grid is not the best and 16th would be the best. So that's what it's currently on. But I do wanna try one eighth first. So let's select that. And then once that's all set, all you have to do is hit the apply button and you're gonna see these notes move. Now the notes we want to pay attention to are these short ones here to make sure that those actually go where they're supposed to. So I'm going to hit apply. And it looks like everything moved where it needed to go. So I guess we got lucky there. So we can move on to our next two bars here. Let's highlight these. Let's hit apply. And it looks like all of those shifted in the right direction also. So that is good. Next two bars. We got a culprit here that may or may not shift right. Let's see what happens. Nope, looks like it did. And you know the reason why it's actually always shifting right is because I have eighth grid on. So if I had 16th grid on, this these would not line up properly. This would have snapped to this little line right here. So choosing the proper quantized grid is important. And it's gonna be based upon Probably, I would say, the tempo of your song and then also like how many notes are you actually playing. If you're playing a bunch of notes really fast, then you're going to want to work with a um, you know higher grid up here, probably starting at the 16th grid. You know, if you're just playing some things that sustain out, you can work with the 1 4th grid and be completely fine or the 1 8th grid. Both of them are good for that. All right, so let's do the last bit here. Cool. So... Everything looks perfect. And I just played this last chord here to kind of just start the next measure, but we're actually gonna get rid of this because I'm gonna loop this up. So let's get rid of this by highlighting it and simply hitting delete on our keyboard. All right, so we have quantized this whole piano part in a matter of minutes. So it's pretty simple if you have a good uh, performance to work with. Now, if your performance is bad, you can still do it the way I told you, but you need to pay attention to all the different notes. And if you don't fully understand, you know, working on a grid and understand, I guess, music theory, we'll say, um, just use your ears. After you quantize and listen, you're going to be able to tell if something's out of timing and then just, you know, shift the little blob here to where it needs to go or shift it a couple times to it makes sense to you. Um, this is not necessarily for people with extensive music theory. There's a lot of people just in bedrooms trying to create music and they're using stuff like this and they're just playing around with it. So I'm just trying to help make it a little bit easier for you. So even though this tutorial is strictly about how to record MIDI and how to quantize MIDI, I do want to show you a couple other tricks in here. So let me close the event operation window here. So all of your notes here have a velocity and that is how loud the note is. That's basically how hard you hit the keyboard. So in my uh, MIDI roll here at the bottom, my velocity is already selected. Now, I don't know if it always defaults here, but for me, this is always what shows up. So I can like, Basically like this note right here, if I want to be a little bit louder, I can click this and drag it up. Or if I want to be softer, I can drag it down. 
So that's basically how you would edit the volume for your MIDI performance per note. And then you can also do full highlights of all these like that. And you can drag one up and it's gonna drag them all up. So you could do bulk edit if we wanna call it that. And then underneath velocity here, you have a couple other options in here, almost like what we saw when we were in the edit window. Now, if I thought my sustain pedal wasn't quite right, and it may not be when I actually loop this up, we can go down to controllers here and then go to sustain. And you're gonna see this is me actually pressing on my piano's sustain pedal here. So uh, typically making sure that this stops before the next phrase starts, make sure that I have no over lingering notes. So this actually looks pretty good. And with that being said, I stopped the sustain pedal here, took my foot off of it. And when I copy and paste this up, this is probably gonna be okay because I took my foot off here. And that's the reason why I hit that last note. It kind of actually sets up the sustain pedal for when I'm going to do my um, duplication of um, you know, MIDI data. So let me actually show you how to do that. So let's close out of this uh, piano rule here. And we wanna make sure that we're on grid here. So I'm gonna put this on to the bar starting at three, and then we will stop this at 11. So if I want to duplicate this, basically loop it up, if I have it highlighted here, I can hit uh, Control D on a PC or Command D on a Mac, and it's gonna loop it up right like that. Now, I am kind of curious, so I'm gonna launch these real fast and see what my um, sustain pedal looks like. So let's do that. All right, so scrolling on over here. This is the first region. This is the second one. And as you can see, it looks like it's okay, but if I wanted to for the piano to stay in here, I could actually have this drag a little further in. So if it started right there, it'd be perfectly fine because I'm putting my foot down on it while this note's being held out. So that's gonna you know, make it sound good. And for you guys non-piano players out there, uh, sustain pedal just makes the I guess you could say the piano sound more fluid as you play it. If I wasn't using a sustain pedal, it would sound pretty choppy. So that's what it's mostly for. And uh, those are the main things I wanted to show you with MIDI. Um, there's not a whole lot else to it for quantization here. Um, you know, we, we went through this quickly, and I think we covered pretty much everything that you would need to get started. Now, if there are any other things you want to know about how to edit MIDI, how to record MIDI, you know, definitely leave a comment in the comment section below. But if you guys learned something from this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to have new videos coming out. So that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.